my name is Lori Taylor, and I am a Senior Solutions Manager here at Fish Creative Display. I have had the pleasure of working with Kurt at Kellogg's for the last couple years. Hello, Kurt. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're excited to have you be a part of this month's Fish Retail Insight video. So thanks for being here. Yeah, Lori Kurt Deck from Kellogg's Merchandising Services. Great to be here today. Just a little bit about myself. I've been with Kellogg's for about 34 years. And within that 34 years, I've been basically on the sales side, but also too on the marketing side. So the nice thing about having the pedigree that I have is I have a lot of exposure how, how retail works and operates. And then on the marketing side, I can really usually use the, really utilize the, the creativity that that is the, the fun part of the business to come up with solutions and designs when it comes to merchandising. Um, I kind of oversee the merchandising group here at Kellogg. So we, we work in corrugated displays, metal displays, and plastic. So we cover the whole gamut when it comes to, to merchandising. So Kurt, my very first question is, how do you make a snap, crackle, pop display? Great question. And really, really, it, it's, it's not as easy as you think it is. It takes a lot of people with a lot of passion, with a lot of dedication to come together to, to create that display. So really tiny, it starts out with an initiative, a focus on where we want to, to drive the, the business uh, at retail and with certain brands. So, so really kind of starts with a great brief from our brand teams and what they want to achieve when it comes to moving the brand to, to the consumer. And that's kind of where it starts. And then you work with really, really amazing agencies, uh, creative agencies, and also to, as we call them, display agencies like, like Fish to help us uh, navigate creativity and, and trying to uh, grab that passion that the brand team has in a, in a brief and make it come to life when it comes to display at retail. And that's how the snap, crackle, pop happens at retail when it comes to displays. So Kurt, how would you describe the current retail environment? Uh, current retail environment, Laurie, is, is getting much better than 2020. Uh, we've learned a lot of crazy lessons from 2020 and uh, put us in a different direction than we are now. Um, the current environment definitely is getting better, but probably is not going as fast as we'd like it in some markets. But it is changed when it comes to how we, we present our product at retail. It's, it's going in a good direction. We're very happy where it's going and we're looking forward to the future. So what do you believe are two of the most important reflections on retail from 2020? Yeah, 2020 was crazy, as we all know. Um, There's a lot of great lessons that came out of 2020. One was basically the shelf and how important the shelf was when it came to, to merchandising and keeping, obviously, product on the shelf when it was really kind of crazy times in the beginning of 2020. And then maintaining it and keeping it to the to the place where consumers could actually find our product and actually shop it in a, in a crazy environment. The next one would be uh, being nimble and trying to understand the landscape and adjusting our, our merchandising strategies and to to accommodate to what we were seeing and how we had to position our product at retail to the consumers. Because as you know, there was a lot of clean store policies out there in 2020 that limited the uh, floor space that displays used to take. So we, we had to basically look at the landscape, the, the blueprint of the store and rethink it and, and rethink how the shopper shopped. So it actually opened up a couple opportunities for us to think smaller in some locations to go bigger in others. So it's actually a, it was actually a good learning process, but I'm sure glad we're through it this year. So how influential is POP retail in the impulse buying world? When it comes to uh, POP influence at the retail world, um, it's, it's incredibly important and it's changing every day. Um, and, it, and if you're not rethinking it or redesigning it, you're going to miss the boat. It's kind of the lifeline of, of, of a business. As you know, landscape's changing uh, with retail, people shopping more online, getting to look to the homes. So when, when the consumer goes to retail and goes to, to buy product, it needs to stand out, it needs to be clean, it needs to be clear at retail so the, the consumer can, can purchase it. So no longer are the days of just destroying displays out there and hoping that the consumers bump into them. There's more of a more strategic and more of a, a sound strategy behind how we design displays and how they're executed at retail. So how do brands like Pringles and Cheez-Its continue to be market leaders in such a competitive category? Yeah, Cheez-It and Pringles are monster brands over here at Kellogg's. So we've got a lot of things that, are, that we're doing to obviously grow the brand, not only in its base, but also too when it comes to innovation. So you'll see like in the Cheez-It world, 
uh, product lines like Snap coming out. So competing more when it comes to like the potato chip occasion with like Frito-Lay. So you'll see things like that coming from Cheez-It. Pringles is a fun brand. So uh, besides crazy, crazy flavors, you'll see a different type of advertising coming out for Pringles. Uh, we have a real core consumer when it comes to, to Pringles that we, we can't neglect. We got to make sure that we stay current. We stay we have to stay current with the, with the, uh, the consumer because we know they're, they're, they're obviously changing all the time and we need to keep up with them. So those two monster brands, there's a lot of effort here at Kellogg's to keep those monster brands continuing to grow and, and be profitable for us. And there's some great, great work in the future for those brands. So how do you tackle display solutions per category? Uh, for instance, mass, grocery, convenience? Uh, another great question here. Uh, and as you called out, there are three different unique categories when it comes to retail. Mass is much different than convenience and in general, general grocery or retail is different than, than mass. So your merchandising solutions have to be different in each one of them. So mass is constantly changing um, in, in, in the direction they're going. So, so you need to be able to stick out and be easy to go through their network and get up to sales for. When it comes to general retail, general retail is obviously competing just like everybody else when it comes to online shopping. Uh, so they're being a little bit more craftier when it comes to, to merchandising. So you'll see things like smart displays and technology being utilized um, when it comes to, to general retail. And then when you go to convenience, one of the challenges we're seeing with convenience, a lot of times convenience stores are tied into gas stations. So everybody has a smartphone nowadays. You can actually go to the pump, put your smartphone in front of the pump and basically start pumping gas. But how do you drive that consumer back into the store to make a purchase? So. You really have to work really closely with those retailers to, to push that opportunity. So when they get into the store, you have to make sure that you, you're on a display that really kind of um, puts your brand in the best position to, to, to have that consumer see it so they can make that purchase because they're not spending a whole lot of time within the store, especially at convenience. So Kurt, what is a recent display success story that you can share with us and why was it successful? Yeah, one of the most successful uh, displays that we've been doing recently is kind of what we call the micro display. We've been working with Bish on this. What we found in 2020 is, again, the, the environment had changed quite a bit, a lot of clean store policy. But there was also to a lot of different spaces throughout the store that, that we still had an opportunity to merchandise in. So what we've always looked at here at Kellogg's is points of interruption. So how can we create points of interruption throughout the store so the consumer can, can either, you know, see our product or, or tie it in with, with uh, or see it as a tie-in with uh, you know, another brand. So some of the micro displays that, you know, we work closely with the Vish team to develop I, when it comes to like Pringles displays and, and the RK displays, RKT treat displays, these are small micro displays that can be placed throughout the store. So if, if the consumer is over by the beer section, they see a small strip of Pringles, there's an opportunity to sell a can of Pringles, or if they're up front wanting to 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 check out and, and they need to grab a quick snack, there could be an RKT bar up there. Or if you go to another part of the section of the store that uh, they could be buying something for for the weekend. Uh, it, we just put you in a position that you can basically tie your product in with not a whole lot of real estate. So the nice thing about these small micro displays is they're not they're not the display that hey it's always going to be in a the store and it's always going to push our sales it's kind of a graduation point so we start with a micro display and we try to build upon it to get to a larger display while hopefully keeping the micro displays throughout the store also so i, I would say that was probably been our, our probably most successful thing in the past year and a half is really kind of really evaluating uh the market and then coming to the market with a solution that worked best for kellogg's so what opportunities do you foresee in the ever-changing retail environment for in-store? As I spoke to, to some of the questions earlier in our conversation here, the environment is constantly changing and, and we have to stay on top of that. Um, with the consumer again doing a lot of shopping online and shopping differently, we really have to have displays that work harder for us. So not just a pretty display is going to cut it anymore. It's got to be a, it's got to be a display that's thoughtfully uh, designed and well engineered. So when the consumer goes in that store or when when they're busy, it doesn't take them a while to to find that display. It's really easy. It's clean. It stands out. 
And there could actually be some smart technology involved too, so it can possibly communicate with it with the consumer too. So gone are the days again, as I, I called out earlier, of just, just tossing a, a pretty display out there and saying, "Hey, it's going to sell product." We have to be smarter, and we have to actually look forward when it comes to technology and design, and trying to to make sure when the consumer are in the retail market and they are in the shopping mode that、uh, it is easy for them and it makes sense. So, how does merchandising affect the recent trend of people in store acting as buyers versus shoppers?、Uh, Lori, yeah,、uh, a continuous theme here.、Uh, we we really have to be smarter.、Uh, and again, gone are the days of when a shopper is just going to be moseying around the store looking for a deal or looking for a possible, you know, you know meal solution, or they have the time. Uh, people are constantly、uh, going forward. They're, they're they're quite busy, but with technology, it's also to a lot of people to have the time to do other things. So shopping could be far, far, far lower on their list of priorities. So when they when they do shop, they're coming in the stores as purchasers. They're they're looking for something to buy. They've done their homework. They know they have a deal in a particular store. They know what they want. They've got to find it. So you need to develop displays that can can draw them in quickly. Either. With a with a, a neat design from a graphic standpoint, or maybe possibly work with like a beacon technology that draws them in from 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 their phone and tells them, "Hey, displays over here、uh, that you're looking for that has the brand that you're looking for." So you know,、um, again, the future is constantly changing. We have to evolve with that. We also have to design and develop displays that accommodate that. Well, in closing, Kurt, I wanted to thank you for joining us. It's been a pleasure working with you over the years. It's been fun. We've worked on a lot of amazing projects, and as you spoke on earlier,、um, all of the、uh, Pringles and Rice Krispie Treat and、um, the cereal in a cup and Cheez-It strips,、uh, those have been really exciting. It's fun to see those in the stores, and、uh, I look forward to creating more amazing displays with you. Well, thank you, Lori. It's it's been really great working with Fish.、Uh, you can see how the the team has evolved and has changed, and, and the、uh, the displays and concepts and designs that the Fish team is bringing to the table is definitely first class and definitely is as forward thinking. So that's why we look to Fish as one of our, our、uh, premium suppliers that we go to to find solutions that help us get to the market and drive our our sales. So couldn't find a better group to work with. So thank you.